Hey, Miles here, milesbecker.com. In this video, you're gonna to get to see behind the scenes of 32 months of content marketing. You're gonna see my exact analytics. You're gonna understand exactly what I've done to create the platform I'm using today and how I'm getting about an 85, 87% increase in traffic. So if you're new to the channel, you're gonna understand exactly what it takes to drive massive amounts of traffic and to really scale a YouTube channel to the 90,000 plus subscriber mark. If you've seen some of my videos like this before in the past, the other monthly updates, you're gonna get some some really cool insights on a few of the tests that I've been running as well. Let's jump right into the data and get into it. So the first thing is we start on my channel, 94,000 subscribers at this point, not bad for still under three years. And then you can see right here, I've done 506 videos. So 506 videos in under three years is the path. And this first takeaway is it takes putting out a lot of great content consistently to create massive results. So here we are inside of the YouTube analytics, and I'm coming off of an experience experiment that was kind of started by Neil Patel. I went to an event in January where I sat down with Neil Patel and he told me that I needed to be running paid ads ads to get more views to my videos, which I had been doing. So I'm coming off of that. I've stopped the paid ads. His theory was you run paid ads for 60 days and then you turn them off for 60 days and your organic growth is higher. We're finally at a point where the data shows what's actually going on there. So this is why I've got a negative 30% down on my watch time. My average view duration is actually up about 10%. When you're paying for uh, views, your view duration on average goes down and then you can see I'm 37% down on the number of views. But again, that's because I'm not paying anymore. So let's look at, I'm going to go back to the beginning of this year. I'm going to do kind of all of 2019 and you can see exactly where I paid, right? So this is the, literally I learned from Neil Patel on January 6th. I told my ad guy immediately while I was in the hotel that evening to start running. So we did a two month block and then we've dropped down. Let me zoom out even farther. And this is where it gets really, really interesting because I, I'm focused on experimenting, uh, using my money, my efforts, my everything to kind of really get an idea of, is this something I should recommend to you, right? I'm the guinea pig. I put my own $5,000 in on paid ads. So you can see I was in a very consistent channel over the last, I'd say six months, seven months right here, and then my paid channel. But now if you notice after the payment, this low right here, which is sitting around, I think 42,000 is about the low number I've seen there compared to these earlier lows, 32,000. That's actually like a 30% increase compared to this last low I had just just before running the paid traffic, 36,000 up to 42,000, that's about a 20% increase, right? 3,600 times two, 7,200, give or take, right? We're in that range. It might actually even be more than that. Uh, I'm using some napkin math here. So right now, it's still early. I still have a very low data set, which means one or two of my videos, and I've had a couple of videos pop recently, one or two of the videos can actually skew the data. But honestly, I didn't see any highs this high or this high or this high in the prior year before. So it kind of looks like Neil Patel might have known what he was talking about and what he was doing about. I want to do one other quick comparison here. I'm going to do the last 30 days versus the year before period. So let me set this up. I'll be right back with you here. So this is another way to analyze this last 30 day period, which I haven't been running any of the paid traffic in the last 30 days here versus where that was in 2018. So this is a year over year comparison and this removes seasonality, right? Month to month, we can have seasonality. Uh, we're getting into summer, we're getting a camping season. A lot of people take weekends off and don't watch as much YouTube in the summer compared to winter when we're all cold and locked up in the house with cabin fever. Anyways, you can see clearly here that it's, I mean, that's like a 60% increase in traffic. Now, again, I have, I've had a video that just put two videos in a row that just did really well. They've gotten a lot of attention. So, so I, I, there's always variables within the data, right? But this data set shows clearly the orange line, which was 2018 compared to the blue line, they're not touching. So two things have changed. Number one, I have more videos now than I did then. So I have that much more channel authority. I'm that much better at optimizing my videos. I continue to geek out on the process of being a successful YouTuber and driving traffic on YouTube, but second, 
second, I am coming off of the heels of running that 60 day worth of traffic. My wife did the same experiment. I'm going to go check her data to see if, if this is a method that I can put my seal of approval on. I might need to go through two cycles of it before actually saying, yes, this is something. What Neil told me, I went and did spent five, 10 grand of my own money running these ads. It does seem to have increased the rate of growth organically because that's really the goal here. Final note on that, I was over two years in before I ran those ads. I was just reinvesting profits, right? The whole growth of this channel, you can watch all the past ones, really was from organic effort of just putting out great videos. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the analytics, maybe a quick note here. Uh, the view numbers are also up year over year. My likes are up about 50% year over year. My subscribers are up about 20% year over year. So two organic periods compared with one paid period in between, all the metrics are trending up, which is what I like to see. Now on to my blog traffic. Now me and my blog are, there's a, a an interesting relationship here. So I use YouTube videos as my core content creation method. You need to have a core content creation method also. It's easier for me to, to wrap out this video with you. I'm totally freestyling off the hip. I just got my tabs open and I'm just going with it. I don't have any notes. So my DNA, my personality type, it's easier for me to make videos than it is to sit down and write long form, great blog posts. With that said, my wife is great at writing blog posts and she started all of her growth through just blogging. So the key that I want to communicate to you is do what comes naturally to you first and find ways to syndicate your content to the other platforms. I have paid, I've been paying, I have a, a content team. I spent probably 25, maybe $30,000 in taking the content I'm putting out through this YouTube channel in turning it into blog posts. Okay. So that's how much I value this traffic method because that written content is what gets picked up by Google. That's where most, if not all of this traffic is coming from. So I'm investing aggressively in a process to get my video content into the written blog. And it's been about two years. We've really been working and trying to dial this in for two years, maybe just under, it could be like a year and nine months, year and eight months, but I'm just going to say it's around two years because I'm, I'm just kind of uh, using rough numbers. I now have 250 blog posts on my blog. Each one is hyper optimized. It's focused on a specific keyword phrase right? I'm doing all the SEO stuff that I teach in my other videos. So what I'm wanting to point out here again is the flat out volume of blog posts. If that's 125 blog posts per year on average that I'm doing, that's somewhere around 10 blog posts per month that my team is publishing on my behalf. Because again, you need to be a consistent publisher over long periods of time to start to move the traffic. Now in the last three months or so, so it took almost two years for my traffic to really start to incline. I've invested $20,000 and then I had to go back and invest more money to re-optimize all those things we did. So it just proves that it's a long process, but here's the cool part. Ready for it? We're going to do some basic comparisons. So I'm going to do a month over month comparison. Now month over month can include some seasonality, but generally this time of year, the seasonality means people are spending a little less time and not more time. Winter people spend a little bit more time on their phones, on their devices, et cetera. 30% increase in traffic month over month, 41% increase in users, 20% increase in page views. Um, my other numbers aren't, aren't great, but these are, these are small movements in the other numbers. Let's do a year over year. We're going to eliminate seasonality on this. And this is where I'm getting into the 87% increase. And you can see there was one day back here where they actually crossed. And from there, this line, I mean, it is just massively going in the right direction. Um, so this is the first place I want to show you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the actual Google traffic because am I just driving all this traffic from YouTube? Am I paying for it? I don't pay for any traffic to this just so you know, but that's the question when you see these graphs, this is all of my traffic, right? So let's go in and go down by source and medium. And you're going to see, we're going to show you the exact numbers from Google alone. So you can see Google right here, Google organic is up 186% year over year. I went from getting about 8,000 visits from Google every month last year. Now I'm getting 23,000 visits. My site's getting over a thousand visits a day day at this point. My list is growing faster than ever. My brand is growing better before everything is working wonders. Let's do the month over month. So you can see real quick if the Google organic 
traffic increase is also carrying month over month. And you can see I'm a 61% increase month over month right now. So everything that I'm doing in the SEO optimization world, um, I've taught it all on my free videos. My learn SEO playlist has all of the information, a lot of click through rate optimization. And then I've got a new tool that's inside of my uh, content and conversion.com membership program where my inner circle members have, I've been just going to town with my team on these core optimization pieces, just advanced SEO stuff. Um, it works. That's what I'm trying to show you. But again, the, the magic secret sauce here is the fact that I put over 250 blog posts up. Um, that's pretty massive. So I just want to do a fun comparison real quick. Let's go back to uh, a few years out. I'm gonna show you essentially some from when I started publishing videos all together. Okay, so this is the full graph. I started publishing my first videos back here and you can see I was literally getting zero, one, three, twenty seven, you know, a handful of visits per day to my website when I started. This is when I started really trying to dial in, kind of trying to start to figure out the blog content stuff. And here's where I really started to implement these kind of um, advanced SEO techniques to really start to work this. And I'm in this massive growth curve right now. How high is this gonna go? Is it gonna keep going parabolic? I don't know. I'm gonna write it out as best I can. Um, this is the potential, but again, 250 posts have been published in about this time frame, in addition to 506, I think it was videos. That's 750 plus pieces of the absolute best content my team and I can come up with. That's what it takes to really grow online. The cool thing is that traffic I've got from Google now is a momentum monster. It will be around for a lifetime. I'm building an asset that will drive traffic. It'll drive leads for years and years and years to come with all of my efforts I'm putting in today. That's what I love about organic traffic is the residual results, the compounding results that we get that pay me for years and years and years and years to come. So that's my ultimate goal. Then finally, we're here inside of the podcast. Now I had a little bit down last month. So I'm looking at the numbers here. January of this year was 8,200. Then it went up to 9,300 in February. March went down to 9,200. But this month it's the 20th, which means I'm two thirds of the way through the month, which means we have one third remaining. So I can kind of cut this number in half and say about 4,100 more downloads is what I would expect in the month. Conservatively, we could expect 3,000 more downloads in the month, which means I should be crossing the 10,000 download mark again. Um, this podcast is 100% hands off for me. My virtual assistant goes in, takes my videos that have talking head only. We don't do the screen shares. She removes the MP3, she ID3 tags it, she puts it up in place, it goes out to the podcast people. So I've got thousands and thousands of people each and every month downloading my content because they can't always watch a YouTube video. They might be on a train, they might be commuting, they might be in their car, they might be at the gym, they might be walking the dog. They're doing something else and they still want to get my ideas. This is why I'm putting out my content in podcast format. It is not a way, I'm not cannibalizing my main audience in any way, shape or form. I'm just making my content more accessible for all of the learning types, right? So I start with my video. That's the easy thing for me to create because it's in my personality. I'm kind of a performer, right? Then my content gets out in the blog because there's a lot of people who prefer reading. There's more Google searches every day than there are YouTube searches. It's a bigger search engine and it's a different format. So I get that my content edited and formatted for the readers of the world, which there are many of them. Then I also get it format and tied into all the podcast apps because there's a lot of listeners in our world. So it's one piece of content that goes out to the three major strategies of people, the three ways that people learn, the three kind of learning types within our world. That's the three pillar content marketing strategy. Real quick note before I let you go, I did videos for one year straight, nothing more than videos before adding on the blogging. Then I've been doing the blogging for about a year before I really added on the podcast. I did not try to do all of it at once. That would have overwhelmed me. I would have made no progress and I would have burnt out. I went all in on video production to really get the hang of this, to really learn this before adding on the next. And then when I had comfort, then I added on the next. So my videos used to take me three, four hours a day. Now they take me 30, 45 minutes a day when I make a video. That extra time I began to deploy towards syndicating my content. How did I get that extra time back? I just got better at making videos. It got easier. It got faster. 
faster. I built processes. I got more comfortable with the process, less false starts, etc. And that's it. That's the trick to the game. Got to put out lots of great content. Make sure each piece is optimized and then syndicate when you get some breathing room. You can do it too. If you have questions, get at me in the comments. Thank you for your time. Thumbs up, like, share, do what you do. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.